Hey, this is Brian Robinson, and today we're going to talk about rapid data prototyping. Just a quick note, True North for Sigma is to serve the business analysts. We believe that spreadsheets are the one language that data engineers, analytics professionals, and business analysts all understand really well. While serving business analysts will always be our True North, we do bring a lot of capabilities to bear for data engineers and analytics professionals, particularly in understanding new and ever-changing data sets. In today's data cloud, or cloud data warehouse environment, it may look a little bit like this, where you're extracting data from those raw data sources, you're loading it into the data warehouse, uh, you're transforming it within the cloud data warehouse, and you're presenting it. And so you might use tools like Fivetran, Matillion, uh, DBT, all along the way, and Sigma is that access point uh, for your business users. Now, that said, Sigma can be really helpful to understand your data as you're going through the different parts of this process. And because of that, it actually opens things up a little bit. Where traditionally, the data and analytics engineers would bring their specialized knowledge of SQL and various data manipulation tools to bear to transform the data and build a data model, before throwing it over the fence to business analysts for their feedback and iterating multiple times in that fashion. This can take many months to get to the right place. But because business analysts already have spreadsheet skills, they can work together live with their more technical counterparts using Sigma, which becomes the common language for data at scale that bridges the language barrier between the business analysts who know Excel and data engineers who know SQL. So this allows for a live collaborative data modeling exercise by a cross-functional team when preparing data for broader use, which shortens the cycle time and the number of iterations in determining one, whether a new data set or changing data set is even useful in the first place, and two, which parts are useful and in what ways, and finally three, what data might still be missing. Okay, that said, I'm gonna give you an example of exactly what I mean. So let's assume that I'm a new merchandising manager at Plugs Electronics, and I've got responsibility for photography equipment. And so I need to understand what demand looks like, uh, how to understand the current inventory levels and things of that nature. Additionally, I've been provided some sample data from uh, an external data set for product reviews. So I kind of want to understand how these products are rated and if that's going to be useful for us in determining what to stock and, uh, and provide for our customer base. So what I'm going to do is start with this flattened out view of our retail sales data, which as you can see, we're kind of looking right into our Snowflake connection. I'm starting with this data because I know this is our sort of standard data. I'm going to explore. When I explore, it creates a new workbook for me. So just like in Excel, you would have different tabs with different uh, pieces of data. We're going to start here. Next, I want to add that sample product review data. So I'm going to add a, a new table, which is going to come from this CSV. And so just switching gears, I'll drag this in. OK, and we can see that there's multiple SKUs here, lots of different reviews. And it looks like some JSON data that has some of the details from these reviews. So I'm going to pull that into our workbook. This is actually being uploaded through Sigma, but stored in the cloud data warehouse. So we're just sort of passing it through to be stored um, in that cloud data warehouse environment. Okay, so we've got about 43,000 records here at the bottom. Very quick and easy to see that. And the first thing I wanna do now is look at, well, how many SKUs are we dealing with? So on any column, I can get the column details. In this case, we're dealing with 353 distinct SKUs. Now, I see that this is JSON data, so I wanna make sure that we treat it as such. Converting it to JSON allows us to then extract that data directly out of that JSON in the easiest possible way. So we wanna extract columns. We're gonna take the review rating, the sentence from the review, there's a sentiment score, and maybe we'll take the review creation date as well. And now we can hide all that JSON that we don't need anymore. Now I wanna sort of merge this in with my retail data and see if it's useful. So first thing we're gonna do is add some columns via lookup. So this is basically like a VLOOKUP in Excel. I'm gonna 
do the lookup for my review data. I want to add in the review rating as an average, right? So there's many ratings for each SKU. And I'm going to join that up on SKU number, matching SKU number. And we can see there are about 6% of our SKUs match with the review data. And of those, there's 5.5% uh, that have multiple matches. And that's okay, right? Because we're going to average the review rating. Okay, perfect. Next, I'm going to go ahead and exclude anything where I don't have a review, where there was no match. Let me format this as a number, two decimal places. Okay, and finally, I want to see this data weekly. So I'm going to duplicate my date column, truncate it weekly, so I can map that out over time. Okay, so my key question is, is this data valuable? So I'm going to do a little bit of exploration over time to, to start with. So I'm going to use a line chart. I'm going to put my week of date on the x-axis. And we'll look at our ratings aggregated as an average over time. And so, OK, this is for all of the 353 products. Now I want to trellis this by our product groups in our retail um, hierarchy. We can see that the Panasonic products are rated around three and a half and Sony's around 4.2. So Sony products tend to be more highly rated. Now I want to add in our sales quantity and sort of compare how much we're selling. And we'll put that on its own Y axis. Okay, perfect. This is exactly the kind of insight I was looking for. So on the left, we can see that Panasonic, we're selling a lot more Panasonic in terms of units. And the ratings are actually less than what the Sony products get. And we're selling less Sony products. So we've got an opportunity here, right? Let's look at the marketing mix. What's the pricing on the Sony products? Where are we placing it in our stores or on our website? Uh, do, are we doing any promotions? We've got an opportunity to potentially gain margin by shifting our focus uh, into those Sony products in particular. So I've determined that this is useful data. And so I tell my boss, hey, this is great. Boss says to the data engineering team, hey, let's bring this in. Let's, let's go pay for this and make this real. So I'm going to save my exploration here. We'll call this review exploration. And I'm going to share this with my colleague, Mr. Matt Curtis, data engineer extraordinaire. Now, when Matt comes into this workbook, he's going to be able to check the lineage to see exactly what's going on. And so we started with that flattened out view of the retail data. We've got a table in our workbook, which is presenting the information from that uh, table in our cloud data warehouse. We built a chart on top of that, and we actually are using a lookup. So in this case, we're looking up from that sample data, the review rating, aggregating it as an average, where the SKU number from the retail sales data matches the SKU number from the product review data. And so Matt can come in here and go directly into the table to see exactly what the column is and even edit the lookup himself so he can see exactly what was done by that business analyst and reconstruct whatever is necessary when he goes to productionalize this particular data set. Additionally, he can actually see the SQL that was generated for anything that's available in this workbook. So for that visualization, this is the SQL query for the table, the tabular view. He can get a look at exactly how things were joined together, where that lookup happened and reconstruct a data set directly from this SQL statement, or even feed this right into uh, DBT, for example, or Fivetran or Matillion uh, to reproduce this for a production run. It just so happens that Matt's a clever individual. He goes and checks in the data marketplace, and he finds that there's power review data available for free, which is a larger set of data uh, than the sample CSV file that we got originally. So data engineer Matt does what he does. He uses the Snowflake uh, data sharing mechanism, 
pulls it into our Snowflake environment. He's able to look at this directly through Sigma. Uh, he sees the different um, reviews, the different uh, SKUs, which correlate to this page ID. And now he can go ahead and create a, a production ready data set from this data um, to provide that level of insight that our business user really wants. Okay, so that was just a, a simple example of bringing in some sample data from a new data set, uh, quickly iterating on that to figure out, is it even valuable? And then sharing that uh, from the business analyst to the data engineer and uh, giving them the tools to really see and understand exactly how that data works with the current data that we have, how they joined it, the lookup that they did. This significantly shortens the iteration time uh, and allows for collaboration across the entire spectrum of data users. That's a quick example of Sigma for rapid data prototyping. Thank you very much.